right, hi there. So um, I'm here as one of three people who are managing the diagnostics for fall armyworm um, over here at the Orange Agricultural Institute. And I just want to talk about um, the, the two-stage diagnostic process that takes us from a bucket of unidentified, undifferentiated brown moths to things that are actually suspect fall armyworms and potential, uh, potential members of that species as quickly as we can. So the first stage of that two-step diagnostic process is a differential diagnosis. We want to throw out things that are not, are for sure not fall armyworm. And then this is followed by a confirmatory diagnosis. If we have something that could be, we want to be absolutely certain that it is or is not that species. And I'm going to talk about how you can identify things uh, at home or how you can best support us if you're going to be sending us samples to identify for you. And that's, that last part is extremely important. I'll emphasize this again at the end of my talk, but proper specimen handling means it's, means it's much more likely that you're going to get a fast, accurate result um, from us for your specimens. Um, adult uh, identification can be challenging with fall armyworm and other noctuid moths. They're all a bunch of sort of generic looking brown moths, and we have many native Spodoptera already. That's the genus that fall armyworms belong to. So we already have a lot of their close relatives here in Australia, and they're very common in agricultural systems, but I'm gonna give you guys a quick sort of cliff notes version of how you can tell the difference. When you're tri tri uh, triaging um, moths from bulk traps, like the kind that we've been deploying in our surveillance already, um, the first thing you want to know is whether it's a moth in the family Noctuidae. If it's not, you can throw it away. The way you recognize a Noctuid moth is that the front wings will have a different color pattern from the hind wings, and the front wings will be distinctly triangular in shape. They will not be square or rectangular or narrow. Um, if the front color pattern on the front wings continues under the hind wings, you probably got yourself a geometrid and you could throw that away as well. There's also a super secret trick that you can use to identify noctuid moths. Uh, members of this family have two little spots on the front wing. These are called the orbiform spot, which is round, and the reniform spot, which is shaped like a kidney, um, as in renal, it's a reniform spot. And these are present in almost all noctuid moths on the front wings, no matter how crazy the color pattern of the moth is you can usually find that secret little pair of spots if you know what to look for. So if there are any diagnosticians listening in on this, that's a fun trick that you can use to throw away anything that is not a noctuid. Once you have a brown nondescript noctuid in your trap sample, the next thing you want to know is whether it belongs to the genus Spodoptera. Like I said, this is the genus of fall armyworm, but we also have many native species that belong to this genus. This is a little cartoon that I made to show you the difference in hind wing coloration. This is the best and fastest way to triage um, Spodoptera from non-Spodoptera noctuids. They have a very, very pale, almost white, translucent, sometimes even opalescent hind wing without a significant amount of brown markings on it. And you can see everything else that we have has um, for everything from Helicoverpa to Grotus, the Bogong moths and their kin have much more dark brown patterning on the hind wing. And so if you're going to send in, for example, a photograph of a suspicious moth that you have, if you can just even take off the front and hind wing from one side of the body and send us a digital photo of that, we can probably give you a faster answer than if you mailed it in. Once we have something that we're absolutely certain belongs to the genus Spodoptera, the next thing we have to do is dissect the genitalia. This is a photograph of our historic, uh, historic, our heroic uh, technician, Catherine, doing a, a long, long series of genitalia dissections from some of our recent bulk trap samples. Um, we need to look at either the male or female genitalia, and the morphological differences there can tell us whether or not we have a Spodoptera frigiperta, and if we don't, what native species we do have. So far, the most common native Spodoptera in our traps has been Spodoptera mauritia, which has this very, very distinctive shape of this little sort of hook-like part on, at the tip of the male genitalia. This is called the, um, the juxta, and it's very wide and broad at the end. And this is something that you can sometimes see in the adult male moths, even without having to dissect them. So, so far, that's been one of the most useful characters for us. Larvae are a lot easier. Um, almost all of our larval diagnostics for suspect fall armyworms worms have been done digitally. Um, we've received quite a few emails through the biosecurity hotline. Those emails get photos attached to them and they are sent to me and then I can look at the larva and say, yes, it's a suspect, send it in, or no, it's not. 
And it turns out that this is pretty easy, but when I talk about this, I apologize in advance for all the specialist terminology that I'm about to use. All you need to know is that on a, on a typical Lepidopteran larva, you'll see all of these brown spots of sclerotized, uh, melanized areas. Uh, these are called the panaculae, singular, singular panaculum, and they are uh, very, very helpful in recognizing the family that you have, as well as the, the genus and species. So larval diagnostics are based almost entirely on color patterns. And because Lepidopteran larvae tend to change color rapidly after they've been killed, they'll shrivel up if you put them in ethanol. And if you leave them alive in your car in a jam jar on a hot day, they will turn black and be much, much harder for us to identify. So we humbly request that you try to take a picture of it while it's alive before you kill it. Even if we're going to do a DNA analysis, it's really nice to have a photograph of the color pattern of the live larva. Um, the big differences you'll see are that the other common noctuid larvae, the earworms and cutworms and armyworms that we already have here, uh, have a distinct set of characteristics that distinguish them from the larvae of fall armyworms. If you see black triangular markings on the dorsum or a big sort of black almost saddle shaped marking over the thorax, that's going to be one of our native Spidoptera. If you see a big creamy white stripe along the lateral part of the body, and a series of tiny little marmorated lines on the, on the dorsum, that's going to be a helicoverpa. And if it's flat and kind of greasy looking without any conspicuous stripes, it's probably going to be an agrotus. All of these also lack this very distinctive character that's common to Spidoptera trigiperta larvae, which is three white stripes on the thorax, one of which, the center one, continues to make an upside down or inverted y shape marking on the top of the head. This is the main diagnostic character that's used for fall armyworm larvae in uh, materials like the EPPO Diagnostic Guide. Um, unfortunately, this great character, which you can see in this little sort of glamour shot of a uh, fall armyworm larva, is awesome everywhere else in the world. But here in Australia, we have a larva that has that character and that is incredibly common, especially right now at this time of year in New South Wales. Um, we're actually beset by them right now out here in orange. Um, this is a Chira affinitalis, a crambid moth, different family, commonly known as the weed webworm. And as an adult, you can tell they're not enough to it. They have a slender body. They have um, wings that lack those two spots that would make it an octuid. But as a caterpillar, they have a pronotum with three pale stripes, one of which turns into an inverted white Y-shaped marking on the head. They have prominent pinacula on the dorsum. And they also have the same little hooks on the feet, all of which would make them positive for fall armyworm. So I'm going to tell you how to tell the difference between these two kinds of caterpillars. Um, it's pretty straightforward, but it takes a long time to figure out. Um, in crambids, if you look at the side of the body, particularly on the abdomen, you'll see the spiracles, which appear like a small, hollowed out oval shape on the side of the body. In crambid larvae, like Echira finitalis, the weed webworm, the panacula on the side of the abdomen will be above, positioned above and below the uh, spiracle. In noctuids, there will be a panaculum posterior to the spiracle. If there's no panaculum posterior to the spiracle, it ain't a noctuid and you can throw it in the trash. So that is my quick and handy guide to telling whether the larva you have that matches all the other diagnostic characters is actually a fall armyworm. So having said that, it is best uh, for us to get digital photos from you first, and we can tell you whether or not you use, need to use your precious time and expose yourself to various pandemics by going out of the house and mailing anything to us. Um, we'd like to get a photograph while alive of the larvae, ideally in focus, showing that at least the top and ideally the side of the specimen. Um, in those cases, we're usually able to turn around a rapid diagnosis for you within 24 hours or less. Um, these can be emailed to the biosecurity hotline. I've given the email address below. There's also a phone number that will be made available to you. If you have to mail a larva, please kill it in 70% ethanol and pack it in a well-sealed vial inside a Ziploc bag and mail it to us from there. We're, we're happy to give mailing instructions and send out prepaid mail back containers for these as well. For adults, they need to be killed first and because they're a suspect exotic pest and then placed inside a hard-sided container with some kind of padding. It can be cotton wool, it can be tissues, it can be crumpled up 
um, paper towels, but some kind of padding because otherwise all the moths get shaken around in there like they're being turned into a margarita and all of the scales go everywhere and we lose a whole bunch of the really critical diagnostic characters for adults. Um, we also ask that you don't put these things in the mail on a Thursday or a Friday because they'll be sitting in the mail over the weekend and we've learned through unpleasant personal experience that a large container of dead moths that's been left in hot conditions over several days smells a lot like rotting shrimp and it's a deeply unpleasant experience for everyone. It also makes our diagnostic job go a little bit slower and a lot less fun. So those are our requests. Some of these tips can be used for any insect sample submission to us. Um, we do provide free diagnoses for all suspect exotics and for LLS officers. And I will be happy to answer any questions. And I think some of this material will also be made available for download from the DPI website. So thanks.